The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by... The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. Florida Frontiers is also sponsored in part by the State of Florida through the Division of Arts and Culture and the National Endowment for the Arts. The way the ri river is situated here in Putnam County, just a little south of Palatka, there's a very sharp kind of a snake turn in the river, and it's called Devil's Elbow. And if you look at it on the map, you can understand, you know, that uh, it's a very tight turn in the river. So what that's done over thousands of years is it's pushed the natural channel close to the shoreline on the Palatka side. So Palatka was the only natural deep water port on the St. John's River in Florida. So it made a, a wonderful location for ships to come to. If a ship docked at Jacksonville or St. Augustine, they actually had to take smaller vessels to unload the ship, people and cargo, because of bars, sandbars. But at Palatka, they didn't have that problem. So this became an important transportation center in this part of Florida. The small town of Palatka, Florida is about 60 miles south of Jacksonville, 45 miles east of Gainesville, and 29 miles southwest of St. Augustine. Welcome to Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Broatmarkle. Palatka is the Putnam County seat, home of St. John's River State College and the Florida School of the Arts, headquarters of the St. John's Water Management District, and the site of Ravine Garden State Park. A quiet little town today, Palatka has a rich and colorful history. Larry Beaton is historian for the Putnam County Historical Society. He is a descendant of Robert Raymond Reed, the fourth territorial governor of Florida from 1819 to 1823. Reed's son moved to Palatka around 1850, where Larry Beaton's family has remained ever since. In the mid-1800s, steamboat traffic was very active on the St. John's River, and Beaton's grandmother shared her memories of it with him. So when she was a little girl, she used to walk along the riverfront with her mother, and she remembered seeing the river, and in any direction that she looked, there were boats coming and going, bringing people and cargo to Black. She said it looked like a highway, that uh, there were so many vessels that were coming and going. But uh, as they walked to the river, there was an ice house on Laurel Street, and she always cautioned my grandmother not to walk on that side of the street. And grandmother got brave enough to ask her why one day. And she said the alligators like to come out of the river in the summertime and uh, reside underneath the ice house with all the cool water that was dripping, and it wasn't a safe place for a little child to walk. Writer and journalist Billy Townsend grew up in Palatka, and his family has lived here since 1884. His family includes business people, legal professionals, and educators. Townsend's great aunt, Kate Walton, was one of the first female lawyers in Florida. She successfully sued writer Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings for invading the privacy of Zelma Kaysen, who was awarded just $1 in damages. Townsend's relatives still live in Palatka in an historic home known as the Brown House. One of my grandf one of my great grand grand grandfathers ran an an Okawaha steamer. It was the uh, Howard fam family, um, and they would go back back and forth, you know, down through Awalaka, down down to Salt Salt Springs. Um, there's some pretty cool pit pictures and stories from from that, um, and you know, I, I think that is what launched. Black because you know it was it was a place where you could access the uh, rivers and, and some some of the wild tourist spots 
and Palatka was the place to be. It was um, it was fashionable to be here, and uh, when you're on the on the boats, those were our highways, and they were the most efficient travel coming in. So these hotels that we had, like the Putnam House and Larkin House, were beautiful, very large scale. Um, hotels that you you would stay in for a while and this was the the end of civilization if you will so this was the exotic travel location so coming down to palatka you know you hit the um you know the area we have a deep port as uh, larry had mentioned but then you got off and that was a transition point where you're going from you know major travel normal travel and then you go into this smaller side wheeler and you're going up the Ocklawaha river which is um, it's a jungle as you go up there. So going up to Silver Springs, you know, even now you go and you're going to see monkeys as you go by and a lot of wildlife. Um, I like to take pictures of the herons that are on the side there. It's so elegant. And I know that the, our visitors coming from up north, especially looking at these exotic birds and you hear the, uh, believe it or not, woodpeckers. They sound like this great jungle bird. So what an exciting trip to have. And you certainly had gone to a place that was as exotic as you would be able to hit uh, without leaving the United States. A large mural on the side of a building in downtown Palatka depicts naturalist William Bartram visiting the area in 1774, where he documented the indigenous people living here. It's a very detailed description where he talks about uh, the, the small children playing in the, in the water. And uh, there was an orange grove, which he assumed might have been a, of Spanish origin. that was just a little on the north side, probably about the area where we are today. And uh, from the village was about, we estimate about where the first Presbyterian church is on the riverfront now. But uh, there was quite a number of people described, I'm not, don't recall the exact count, but it was a pretty good sized village. And uh, actually when this house was built, uh, there were shell mounds that were in front that had been part of, of where that settlement was. My, my aunt, who sued Mark Artie Rawlings, owned an orange grove on Drayton Island. Um, and she would take me there. And I remember her talking about Bartram's stuff. And, and Dray Drayton Island is about as wild a place as you can go still you know, in, in, in Florida. Uh, and so I've, all, I've always had a connection to the, the remoteness that you, that you could still find in, in places here. During Florida's British period, the city of Rollstown existed in what is now East Palatka from 1767 to 1783. And that was one of the first historical markers that was placed in Putnam County was the uh, marker where uh, the part of the settlement, primary part of the settlement of Rollstown was located, uh, where he brought uh, a lot of, I guess today we would call street people from London over to start this new settlement. And it actually extended quite a, quite a range down the river from here and also to the east towards St. Augustine. Florida encourages idealists and that really was what Rollstown was was this um, idea of this utopian society where you know every person could contribute and make this ideal place to exist to be better um, of course it didn't quite work out as well as he had hoped but um, that extends down uh, into um, all the way down past Wilaka my, again, my, my great aunt, she, she married a man who was much older than her, who was my great grandfather's friend. And he has an account of going around East Palatka and discovering these abandoned ghost towns and things. Um, before, before there was a bridge, they had a chain across the, uh, they, had, they had stretched a train across, I'm uh, sorry, a chain across the uh, river and, and you sort of pulled yourself along your, your, your wares. There was, there was a lot of, uh, they would grow, uh, potatoes over there. Uh, they, they did a lot of tur turpentining. So I think to get their stuff across the uh, river to uh, Appalachia, there, there was a lot of pulling of, of, of the chain, which I always think is pretty evocative. The Putnam County Historical Museum in Palatka is housed in a building from the Second Seminole War. It was built approximately 1838 and abandoned by the military around 1841. And as far as we know, I've been told this by several other historians in Florida. It's the only uh, e existing building from that period. 
It used to be across the street from um, the hotel in, on the riverfront here. And we found out that, uh, that the hotel was acquiring the property and was going to demolish the building. So we, in conjunction with the city of Palatka, had the building moved to this site in 1985. It's part of Fort Shannon. It was a depot, so it wasn't something where there was this big battlefield. It was a depot to send out supplies to other areas. Um, we had gone to, I think it was Fort Dade over uh, south of Ocala, um, and the description is that they had three pine trees that made their fortification, and this is Second Seminole War. Um, and the reason why, it was because it was such a, the war was immediate and urgent. They were actually under an ambush and um, as they're you know running trying to get something anything together to fight from and defend themselves you know that's how they felled those three trees and that was their fort. Um, here uh, we had a little bit more time to build but certainly uh, you'll, that's our only building left and it took up the most of um, downtown area um, the Presbyterian Church that's right on the riverfront there course that's also where Bartram Bartram was but um, that was part of the um, Fort Shannon as well for that second Seminole War a lot of the other buildings were torn down um, they had a, a large tower that was on the river front but um, those barracks somehow somehow lasted the Putnam County Historical Museum is located next door to the Bronson Mulholland house an historic home in Palatka open to the public so Judge Bronson, when Robert Raymond Reed, my ancestor, was appointed territorial governor of Florida, uh, Bronson was uh, brought down from New York State uh, to take uh, uh, Judge Reed's place as the federal district judge for this area. Um, Bronson had been a, um, an attorney, and he had also served in the 25th Congress of the United States, and he served on a committee of the territories and he was assigned the territory of Florida to study. So he became the expert in Congress about it. So he was a natural person for the president to select to come down here. So he moved to St. Augustine with his wife and also his two, two daughters. Uh, and he was, came here to Palatka because the indebtedness of my ancestor and two other families that owned what was referred to as a Palatka tract. And in the process of doing that, he really fell in love with the community. He had already invested in a sawmill south of here, and he used some of the materials from that, but he was given 10 acres, or he, I guess he actually asked for 10 acres, on the north side of Palatka to build his home and to have a citrus grove because he liked it so much. And he, he eventually brought his wife over to show her the property. She was very pleased with the site also. So that's where they constructed the home. And nine acres west of here was planted in citrus. Palatka was incorporated in 1853, quickly becoming a major port and railroad distribution center for lumber, citrus, and other agricultural products. As the 19th century came to a close and the 20th century began, Palatka and its citizens were facing serious economic and social problems. The Bronson Mulholland House was abandoned by the family during the Civil War. It was used by Confederates as a lookout for Union gunboats on the St. Johns River and later served as barracks for Union soldiers. The Civil War had a significant impact on Palatka. They assumed because it was an important transportation center that the town was probably going to be burned. Um, or at least shelled by uh, Union ships. So most people in Palatka evacuated the town. There was less than 50 people that were left in the community during the war. And a lot of them ended up in Orange Springs in Northern Marion County. If you go to the cemetery in Orange Springs, you'll find a lot of Palatka related names. And another group of people took the railroad part of the trip to Sanderson, Florida, which is between McClenney and Jacksonville, kind of off the I-10 US-90 area, which was probably not a good place to evacuate to because that was just east of uh, Olusti. And of course, the largest uh, battle of the, of the war taking place in that area. That's where my family ended up. And my great-grandmother was born in a barn in, uh, in Sanderson uh, during the war.
After the Civil War ended, the Bronson Mulholland House served as a freedman's school. Uh, we don't know how they were friends, but Sophronia, uh, the uh, widow of Judge Bronson, uh, knows Charlotte Henry. Charlotte Henry um, is noted as being a nurse during the Civil War. We don't have any other documentation other than her obituary for that. But the, she then came down with an agreement with Sophronia to rent the home and hold a freedman's school. So the Bronson Mulholland House, because it was large and because it had been empty, it was, you know, it was just a blank slate. They had space for classes and they had space for um, living quarters. There's a, a very old cemetery west of here called Westview Cemetery. It's off of State Road 20. It's kind of like a who's who of, of black in that cemetery. There were originally three cemeteries. There was a public cemetery, a black cemetery, and a Catholic cemetery, and the center one was the black cemetery. I remember walking that cemetery as a little boy and seeing a lot of wooden uh, grave markers, which are gone now, unfortunately. But a lot of them have been replaced by newer markers, identifying the fact that these were black soldiers that served uh, during the war. Following the Civil War, Palatka thrived with seven large hotels serving tourists taking steamboats up the Ocklawaha to Silver Springs. By the 1880s, Palatka was a transportation hub thanks to the railroad, and the town had the second largest lumber mill in the world. In 1904, Mary McLeod Bethune started the school that would become Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona, but before that, she ran a school in Palatka. She had met a, 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 a Methodist minister in Georgia at a conference, and he introduced to her Miss minister that was here in Palatka that was looking for a teacher for their school. And so she ended up coming to Palatka and being a teacher of the school. She also uh, did a lot of community work while she was here. She visited prisoners in, the, in both the county jail and the city jail and sang hymns to them, taught several of them how to read while they were in prison. And she did a lot of other community type work, very active in the churches here, not only her own church, but other churches. And uh, unfortunately, that school building has been torn down, but we know the site and we know, you know, where she stayed when, while she was here out off of St. John's Avenue. Um, so it, uh, yeah, she had quite an impact on the community while she was here. In the early 20th century, the Ku Klux Klan was very active throughout Florida. After World War I, the Florida Klan reorganized near Palatka. The increasingly aggressive Klan encountered strong opposition. Peter Hagen served as Putnam County Sheriff from 1916 to 1924 and again from 1928 to 1930. In a time when many politicians and members of law enforcement were members of the Klan in Florida, Peter Hagen openly opposed them and stopped lynchings. When Hagen lost re-election as sheriff in 1924, the KKK operated with impunity. And they would go on these beating sprees. They would abduct people, black and white, men and, and women, uh, would, would beat them for sort of for, for drinking mo mostly, but for, cu for cultural things. Um, and after a uh, two black men were, were killed trying to, res to rescue one of their, their mother in 1926. Um, and that attack caused the governor of Florida to threaten to declare mar martial law in, 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 Put in Putnam County. My great grandfather was involved, very much involved in, in the resistance to that. His name was Judge, judge Walton. Judge was his first, 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 first name. He was a lawyer, but not a judge. Um, and then in 1928, the sheriff who had done the, uh, the, the uh, lynching repulsion in 1928, he came back and ran again and won in a, in a very narrow win. And it was, to my knowledge, the only true democratic repudiation of, of the Klan, maybe in the South, like cert certainly in Florida. Um, it defeated the Florida Klan, the most, the, the most important and most power, powerful Florida, Florida clan, which was the, the clan of the 20s. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Palatka had entered a period of economic decline. A fire in 1884 destroyed most of the downtown area, and the Great Freeze of 1894-95 devastated the citrus industry. Some relief came in 1933 when Thomas Gillespie helped secure federal funding to establish Ravine Gardens as a tourist attraction. 
he had gone around and talked to civic groups like Kiwanis and Rotary and some church groups and kind of sold the idea. And then the city embraced the idea and he was put on a committee to go to Washington to talk to the Roosevelt administration about turning it into a WPA project. And he contacted a landscape architect in Jacksonville who was brought down to lay out the design. When they got funded, um, at one point they had between 200 and 250 workers each day working on the ravines. There was a, um, uh, a nursery down, I believe in Lake County, that they ended up purchasing 100,000 azalea plants to plant in along with other plants. So that nursery did very well by uh, the, the, the WPA also. I grew up across the street from it. Uh, I've spent many, many, many a day, an hour picnicking or, or run, running around those trails. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a classic New, New Deal project. Um, put, put people to work. It's, you know, it's, it's what it says. It's a ravine, um, very unusual. Uh, topographical stru structure in Florida in in uh, Palatka. When you're down at the bottom of it, there's there, there's little springs, and you go up, and it's you know you're, you're you got to go up a very steep steep hill. It's kind of like a giant ankle, really. But um, it's got well maintained gardens, and uh, just it's endlessly fun to go run run on the trail. They have swinging swing bridges. Uh, I think it's certainly em emblematic. A Palak. And for me, it's important as well. Like it sits right next to the baseball stadium, which is also historic where I played. I was a, a Palak, a high baseball player. And so that whole air area, like my house, the, the baseball field, the ravines are all right there together. And so, you know, it's a very, very special place for me. St. John's River State College was established in Palatka in 1958, and the Florida School of the Arts came to the campus in 1976 to serve aspiring performers, visual artists, and entertainment technicians. Palatka was chosen because it features a beautiful building in a nice historic, quiet part of Florida that allows students to really focus in on what they're studying and practicing and creating their art. It was um, in part the remoteness that they liked. They wanted a, a quiet, um, small town uh, where, where people could focus on their art and not, not have distractions um, away from all of, the, all of the kinds of distractions you would get in a larger city. Students from the Florida School of the Arts regularly participated in productions of Cross and Sword, the official state play of Florida by Paul Green, gaining professional experience. The play tells the story of the founding of St. Augustine by Pedro Menendez de Avales and ran from 1965 until 1996. It was a, pro a professional production and it ran uh, um, from the beginning of June all the way through the middle of August. And you do not get an opportunity as a performing arts student or technician to really participate in, in essentially a, the kind of long run that most professional theater has. You know, colleges, universities, we, you know, one weekend, two weekends, three weekends is a long run for, for, a, for a college show. I think our students are extremely connected to the community here. They live here, they work here. A lot of them come from other parts of Florida, bigger cities, and they move here to study for the two years with us. So they really integrate themselves into life at St. John's River State College, at Florida School of the Arts, but at Palatka, in Palatka as a whole. The local government in Palatka supports historic preservation, working cooperatively with the Putnam County Historical Society. Together, they saved the Bronson Mulholland House from demolition, and it was open to the public in 1977. The Historical Society has been a partner with the city in the operation of the house for over 50 years. So uh, it's one of the longest standing relationships that I'm aware of between a municipality and a nonprofit that has worked well for both parties and of course to the benefit of the city. Palak is, will always be my home. It's, it's what made me who I am for better and worse. Um, very proud of the role my family played in it. I mean, we, we, we were on the right side um, and helped deliver the right outcome. And by we, I mean my, my ancestors, you know. Um, I feel a lot of obligation to that in my own life and to, to try to live up to that standard. So I, I take a lot of, in, inspiration from Appalachia. You know, I, I think it's, you know, strange location. You know, it, it's it's not quite close enough to any big city to be like 
a suburb of it or anything. Uh, I think it's probably poised to grow, um, and I hope it does in a, a useful way. Today, Palatka has a quaint ambiance with many historic buildings preserved in two nationally designated historic districts. The city's complex and sometimes difficult history is significant and important to remember. You've been watching Florida Frontiers presented by the Florida Historical Society. Visit us anytime online at myfloridahistory.org. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Brokemarkle. The Florida Historical Society presents Florida Frontiers is made possible in part by the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and by The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is in the O'Galley section of Melbourne, Florida. Preserved as it was in the early 20th century, historic tours of the Rossiter House include antiques, artifacts, and family heirlooms, and the 1865 Houston Family Cemetery. The last resident of the home was successful businesswoman and philanthropist Caroline P. Rossiter. The historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens is available for weddings and other special events. Florida Frontiers is also sponsored in part by the State of Florida through the Division of Arts and Culture and the National Endowment for the Arts.